It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the movies of June 22nd, 2001. We've only got two movies to look at today, so let's go ahead and get right to it. And we're going to start off with the biggest new release of the weekend, and that is the one that started it all. Before we even got to characters like Cypher and uh, Hobbs and Shaw, you know, all these characters we've been introduced to, this crazy world that this series existed in. Let's go back to a simpler time, the, when this movie was, series was about illegal street racing, Cool cool early 2000s action, and um, you get the idea here. Let's talk about the one and only, the one that started it all, The Fast and the Furious. So this is where it all began. All those crazy over-the-top se action sequences, talking about, you know, family all the time. It all started with this one movie that was literally about illegal street racing. Uh, you have an LAPD officer, played by Paul Walker, who goes undercover in the street racing world to investigate a group of unknown hijackers believed to be led by Dominic Toretto, played by Vin Diesel. Now, does that sound like any other movie that came out ten years prior kind of helped launch the career of Keanu Reeves as a serious action star? Also, had Patrick Swayze in it. I'm, of course, talking about Point Break. I thought I had a joke there, but I couldn't think of another movie that we, that they were both in. So, point. This is basically just a 2000s version of Point Break, but it's a fun 2000s version of Point Break. I mean, this is a movie that is heavily focused on the action sequences, the car chases, you know, the sexy imagery. I mean, like I said, early 2000s action. I mean, this is just it's right up there with some like with, like, cheesy, fun movies. like Kind of like with Lara Croft Tomb Raider, what we talked about on the last episode. It's better than that, but it's not a great movie. It's definitely a film that is heavily flawed in a number of areas, from the story department to the characters to, like, the to like some of the, the storylines in general. Just, like, the writing overall is not great, but when it shows off the action, man, the action for this is pretty impressive for the time. And, um... You know, Vin Diesel and Paul Walker definitely do show that they do have a good chemistry together. It does show work when it needs to work. But like I said, it's pretty much just a ripoff, a point break. And it's hard to believe that the series that we know this series to be at today began with such a simple concept like this. Just think about that. Think about where we've gone in the 20 plus years since the original Fast and Furious movie has, has come out. And like, just what a world, man. What a world. But, uh, yeah, really, there's not much more I can say about this one. Uh, the Fast and the Furious, it's, it does a pretty good job of handling what it's supposed to give you, pe give the people at the time. A movie about illegal street racing, a, not, a 2000s version of Point Break, some good characters overall, Paul Walker, Vin Diesel. Uh, Michelle Rodriguez and Jordana Brewster probably aren't written as well as they later be in the series to in the films to come. Even then, it's not really all that much, but... Certainly, they are a lot better than what they are in this movie, and, um, yeah, not much more to say about this one, honestly. Like, Fast and the Furious, the first one, it's the, well, it's the one that started it all, and it's the one that kind of set the tone for what was to come. And even then, the tone will be set for, be, way more down the road as the films get more ridiculous and more stupider, and, uh, and even where they're at right now, less fun, but, um, but, uh, yeah. So, that is the Fast and the Furious uh, the original. So uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up and take a look at the second big new release that came out this weekend, and that is Eddie Murphy returning as Dr. John Doolittle in Dr. Doolittle 2. Of course, this is the sequel to the 1998 movie, and it's definitely more kid-friendly than the other movie is. Uh, you basically have uh, Eddie Murphy once again as Dr. Doolittle as he tries to help the animals protect their forest from unscrupulous human developers, uh, one of them played by Jeffrey Jones, the other played by Kevin Pollack. He decides to populate the forest with a species of animals that the law protects, and that is a bear, and it would enlist the help of another bear, of a female bear voiced by Lisa Kudrow, who is a lone Pacific West ba Western bear living in the condemned forest, and to provide her with a mate, Doolittle turns to Archie, played by Steve Zahn, who is a wise-cracking circus performing bear. Um, in addition to everybody from the first movie, you know, Kristen Wilson, uh, Raven Simone, Kyla Pratt, you also have a sh massive voice cast in this, again, um, you know, uh, Norm MacDonald's back, Steve Zahn, Lisa Kudrow, Mike Epps, uh, Michael Rappaport, Isaac Hayes, Andy Dick, John Witherspoon, Cedric the Entertainer, Jamie Kennedy, David Cross, Bob Odenkirk, House Sparks, even Kevin Pollock himself has a role in this as the as an alligator. 
Joey Lauren Adams, Mandy Moore, Frankie Muniz, Michael McKeon, and David Lander. Of course, uh, Lenny and Squiggy. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger has a cameo in this as well. Everybody's back except for Chris Rock. I mean, like, what happened to the guinea pig? They never really explain what happened to him. Like, he's just kind of, he's just gone. Like, he really does not, he just really has gone forever, I guess. Or at least that's what I remember, but, um, but, um, from what I remember from this particular movie, it's just like, it was fine for what it was. This was one of those, I remember going to see this one in in theaters when I, when it came out. I didn't see the first one in theaters, but, um, I still think the first one still is the strongest movie of these movies, if you want to include the Doolittle with, with Robert Downey Jr. And then, of course, there's the sequels that came out under, with uh, Kyla Pratt taking over the leading role. And in that one, for some reason, she basically gains the same powers that her dad does, which makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, this is it gets a little bit too silly for its own good. And in this one, it's kind of that. It gets a little too silly for its own good. It's focusing more on the gross-out jokes, which apparently gets you a PG rating instead of a PG-13, which I don't understand why they had to why they had to drop the rating down for this, which, I mean, the first one was PG-13 and was a big success because it appealed to everybody, not just kids, but also adults as well. And then this one's just kind of like, we're just going specifically for the kids. I mean, screw the adults in this situation. We're going to make this uncomfortable for you. And like, yeah, that scene in the tra the trailer, at the, the scene at the end of the trailer kind of sets the tone for what's to come here with this movie. And it's just like, yeah, it's just, it's not bad, bad per se. It's nothing too, it's nothing too like, it's like, it's not grown worthy is what I w want to say here. But it's definitely noticeable. It's definitely more of a focus of that, you know, too much toilet humor going on here. Eddie Murphy, I think, doesn't really give a whole lot into this. Like, if you felt like with this particular movie... He was just cashing a paycheck, at least with The Nutty Professor 2, which was definitely a step down from the first movie. You could definitely tell that his heart was in that film. This one just feels like he's just cashing a paycheck because the first movie was a success, and clearly this is going to do just that as well. So, so yeah, not a bad movie per se, but definitely a movie that is... A, is bottom line, it's just a typical comedy sequel. It's just a movie that's definitely a step down from the previous film. Doesn't have that same jolt or energy as the first film does. And it really does hurt in the long run, so. That's all I gotta say about that one. That's Dr. Doolittle 2. And so with that said, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. And when we meet next time, we'll take a look at four movies, including Steven Spielberg's highly anticipated AI Artificial Intelligence, which had the help of Stanley Kubrick before he died. Uh, we also have John Singleton's Baby Boy, Kirsten Dunst and uh, Jay Hernandez and Crazy Beautiful, and uh, Pootie Tang, because Chris Rock would return for Doctor Doolittle too, because he was working on this movie. But um, we'll take a look at all four of those movies as we move on to our next episode. But until then, uh, thank you so much for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the plays on the next page, check out the previous episode, and also don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this on this channel. So, with that said, I'm off. I will see you guys next time, and until then, as always, take care.